Eh, hey, voilà, il fait moi rêver. La tête d'homme fait moi rêver. Eh, hey, tiens, quand tu... <rire> Yeah, yeah, I think that just about sums it up. Oh, come on, man. There's no need. Yo, guys, it is your boy, unquestionably underwhelming Trim Niran here. And you are watching FTW. Now, this, of course, the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the course of the last seven days. And this week marks a year since lockdown officially started in the UK. Sheriff's deputy. <laughs> Which was... You should say no. In the micro wave. And I've had the same amount of female interaction during that time as I usually would. <coughs> Why does it have to be this way? The Wembley lasagna still hasn't been built. You still can't buy premium food at football grounds. And Tottenham are still sh**. Let's be real here. People are so bored they've started selling tweets online. One by Jack Dorsey, he's gone for two million pounds. There's some absolute classics that are about to break records here. But look, if anyone's wanting to buy, I'll happily put mine on the table and make a bit of money here. On to the football though now, and we start in London where we saw a ridiculous game between Arsenal and West Ham United. Now the Hammers were 3-0 up at one stage before two own goals and a Lacazette equaliser rescued a point for Arsenal. I'm convinced no team in London actually knows how to play football. As soon as you pass through the M25, footballing ability's gone. You step on the tube and your ACL is finito. Oh, my knee. Oh, the pain. It's crippling. Somebody help me, please. I need Tottenham lost to an extra in prison break. Arsenal conceded three to this man. They have been training with me. Dodge stress quattro uh, times. And West Ham United managed to bottle a 3 0 lead by scoring more goals. How do you even look? Listen, this must have been pity points from West Ham. Arsenal are just that one kid at school that's yet to finish the 100 meter sprint within 11 minutes at Sports Day. Either that or Arsenal just dashed it on amateur for the second half. I have no idea. Jesse Lingard has made Arsenal his official dance troops again. He's going to have to start charging entry at this point. Jesse Jesse Lingard versus Arsenal is the only legal club open at the moment in the UK. David Moyes on the decks. Free entry if you support Arsenal because you're already suffering enough. But one man not on it, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. I'm convinced this man was working from home during this one. You're allowed to play sport in lockdown, Pierre. You don't have to actually, like, you can leave. If he got a disciplinary last week, you've just got a pseudo man at this point because he hasn't even turned up for the game. How about sign the thing. The only thing this man's gonna need to sign is a missing persons report. Look, listen, I'm suggesting it's all negatives. There are silver linings, okay? He's got his 10,000 steps in. Probably didn't even do that thinking about it. Meanwhile in midfield and Thomas Party's trying to recreate a Chris MD video, Martin Erdegaard's the only guy who performed and he doesn't even play for them. It's not much better for Spurs, really, on the other side of North London. They did recover from a catastrophic L handed to them by Dinamo Zara grab on Thursday by coming back and beating Aston Villa in the Premier League. It seems like Joe Hart's finally got the hang of social media and which team actually wins a football match. Meanwhile, Gareth Bale confessed in the media this week that he plans to go back to Real Madrid at the end of the season once his loan is done and that his only intention of being at Spurs was to build fitness to be able to play at the Euros. Spurs fans, your club legend texts you for fool. How did you feel? He's used you as a fitness regime. The contract that he signed is a gym membership for f sake. Gymshock now coming to a stadium near you. After everything that's happened for Gareth Bale and Spurs, he's used Jose Mourinho as a personal trainer for crying out loud. To be fair though, did work for Tongi and Dombele in the park that time. Jose Mourinho was found commenting on an Instagram post from Tottenham about Ben Davies this week as well. Now Ben Davies had to come on for an injured Sergio Reguillon. Turns out he was actually nursing an injury as well. And Jose acknowledged that, saying that he's a warrior. Contra 
contrast that to what you'd find him commenting on Gareth Bale's Instagram. I just can't believe it, man. He's really just gonna peace out at the end of the season. With these as his 2021 1080p HD highlights. Now, the Champions League and Europa League draws have been made this week. And I'll be honest with you, there's some tasty ties for the quarters and semi-finals. Liverpool are looking to get revenge on Real Madrid after the Champions League defeat of 2018. Loris Karius has seen the draw. He hasn't left the house since. Meanwhile, we're promised to see Mo Salah versus Sergio Ramos 2. The sequel rematch WWE. I say that, I mark it as highly as that. Mo Salah's training like he's about to take him on in Tekken 2. Final round. Meanwhile, the Europa League draw is not quite as dramatic. It looks like a pre-season tournament from career mode. Manchester United got to the quarterfinals via a victory over AC Milan in the round of 16. And despite going out to his former sides, Zlatan Ibrahimovic had some choice words about the current stock of United players. You played for Manchester United earlier in your career. How does this current Manchester United team compare with the one that you played for? It looks better, but it doesn't matter if you don't win nothing. I think was better than mine, but I won trophies. That's the big difference. This guy, man, he could be 78, yeah, still somehow playing in Sweden's 12th division, and he'd still be coming out like, ah, yes, I might be 78, but I still have 58 years more experience than most of them. I don't know why he's Russian. I'm not gonna lie to you. Meanwhile, Czech side Slavia Prague knocked out Rangers. That, however, was overshadowed by an alleged racist remark to Glenn Kamara of Rangers from Slavia midfielder Andre Kudela. So, what went down? Does Kamara of a huddle and a crowd amongst the players. There's some sort of confrontation going on. Andre Kudela walks up to Glenn Kamara, covers his mouth and says something in the ear of the Finnish midfielder. Now immediately he reacts and so does the guy next to him. And to me, that is a very crucial thing here because obviously Slavia are denying any wrongdoing. So is Kudela. But it's the fact that two people have reacted and said the same thing. They're not gonna decide they're gonna do this before the game starts. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, generally speaking, for me, regardless, you should show some sort of compassion towards an alleged victim. I'm not saying point fingers at the guy who's done it because it's not proven yet. There still needs to be an investigation. However, when two people are reacting in the same way, it does make me lean towards Glenn Kamara here. Now, on top of that, why has Kudela covered his mouth, all right? He knows if he covers his mouth, there's very limited evidence you can get. And furthermore, Slavia have lied about it, okay? And this, this is another big issue here. And I've had a lot of Czech fans in my DMs, all right? I've had a kind of a 50-50 split between people being embarrassed and people just mindlessly going along with what Slavia are saying. But there is not a f***ing way in hell that this guy's walked up to Glenn Kamara and said you're a f***ing guy, as apparently, according to Slavia, they have done. They also lied about an alleged assault that happened in the tunnel. He might have been beaten up, but they said they had to call the police, and the police confirmed they didn't receive a report about anything. So if they can lie about that, they can lie about what actually happened. And we've seen Slavia do this before with unproven allegations against Lukaku, but more solidified ones against Nelson Semedo. I think it's very important to wait until the investigation's done and not point a ridiculous amount of fingers all over the place because sometimes that can be counterproductive. But for the people that I've had in my DMs from the Czech Republic or whatever, trying to justify it because of the fact that he was then punched up afterwards, I don't condone violence. But if someone is racially abused, I think I'm not, I'm not gonna not condone them beating them up afterwards. That's all I'm suggesting. And if you prioritize a guy getting beaten up for racism more than the racism itself, I've got some bad news for you. <laughs> news just in. You're a f***ing wrong'un. Slavia added insult to injury by posting an anti-racism video and campaign on Twitter. Really and truly, this is like John Terry getting in the mix. You've not really got a leg to stand on. He was too busy getting horny on Maine on Instagram. He's got other things to deal with. At least it's actually his wife this time. We'll await an investigation, but if it is proven to be true, UEFA need to take serious action against him and probably the club as well. In lighter news though now, Dejan Lovren's decided he wants to start training for UFC. I'm not surprised he lasted a while against a professional. This is just normal footage of him in any penalty area he steps in. In Spain, and Sevilla's goalkeeper Bono scored a goal from a corner in the last minute of their game. Erling Haaland's about to file transfer his way over to argue with him again.
And staying in Spain in a game between Athletic Bilbao and Ibar, a drone crashed onto the pitch, holding a banner, protesting games from Euro 2020 being held in Bilbao. Let's be real, this is what the banner actually says. Meanwhile in France, and we've got one of the most ridiculous free kicks you're likely to see. C'est n'importe quoi. C'est du minesque. C'est n'importe quoi. For a start, keeper needs a resting. Dinamo Zagreb manager settings. I want to see him on a level. The technique here, ridiculous. About as much dip here as my channel CPM. Over in the Bundesliga now and reigning champions Bayern Munich genuinely get players sent off just to mix things up a bit. Let me add a little bit of... Spice. How can you be down to 10 men and still then go 3 0 up within the next 20 minutes? That's physically impossible. What kind of farmers have they got in Germany? Meanwhile, Borussia Dortmund were not so impressive, drawing 2 2 with FC Köln, and Erling Haaland was not too pleased about it. Listen, Erling, look, if you ever need a new club, then Liverpool, you know, will be interested in it. Just play the away games, you'll get depressed by the home ones. It's okay. Closer to home, and Manchester United are out of the FA Cup at the quarter final stage thanks to a 3 1 defeat against Leicester City. Now you see they bully me about the semi-finals. They can't do that if I don't get there. If Harry Maguire is a fridge then Victor Lindelof is a dishwasher. I respect him taking the knee during Tielemon's goal. Solidarity but like come on man you've got to defend. A Fred mistake gave Leicester the lead early on. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reaction was a little bit questionable and because of that mistake Fred received a lot of abuse online. Racism included. I yeah, know you guessed it. What a surprise. Where it needs to be flushed out. I'll probably make a specific video on that in the future. Meanwhile, I'm convinced Donny van der Beek is actually now just being held hostage at United. I'm fully expecting Liam Neeson to just bust through the doors at Old Trafford. So Donny, you had your first 60 minutes in three months tonight. How did you feel playing? Oh yeah, it was uh, it was great actually to just get some minutes under my belt, really. That was the nice thing. This man could Yelp review stadium seats at this stage. A former Manchester United midfielder by the name of Ronnie Woolwork has been given a suspended prison sentence after a Assaulting a man who stepped on his white trainers. Just use Crep Protect. Like, what is going on? After a Liverpool fan asked for rates on flights to Istanbul for the Champions League final, Ryanair were having absolutely none of it whatsoever. It's a shithousery award for them. Meanwhile, Daniel Sturridge has been trying to teach members of his family about the inner workings of football. James, guess these football players. Messi. Miles off it. Who's this? Messi. That's not Messi Jams, <laughs> he miles off it. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. Elsewhere now, and ahead of international duty, Cameroon wanted to call up Bayern forward Eric Maxim Choupo-Moting. Problem is though, they sent the invite for him to travel with them to the wrong email address. And now it's too late for him to actually travel. <laughs> I just can't. Up in Scotland and part-time team, Brora Rangers knocked Hearts out of the Scottish Cup. Now I can't stress this enough, Hearts are obviously a pretty big team. They're, they're down in the second tier of Scotland right now. But the team they got knocked out by are literally part time. They play in like the Highlands League and they play at a stadium called the Dungeon. Fam, they, they they might as well just play in as the car park. We've got this absolutely outrageous finish from Joca who plays in the second tier of Portuguese football. Formidável passo de avto, repare, tira do caminho. In a slightly different area of the globe, we have these builders from Barnsley making the most of their brilliant view. Meanwhile, over in Uruguay, and 16-year-old striker Nicolas Siri has become the youngest player to ever score a professional hat-trick. He beats the record previously held by Pele, who coincidentally has just found rare footage of himself scoring three goals in a year eight playground. But now for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania... <laughs> if you're gonna have all nines haircut, you can't be slapping it into rose Z. To be fair, well. in Brazil, and we've got this ridiculous goal. Tentar inclinar o jogo para para a esquerda. A questão é que o Rodrigo Martins tem feito muita coisa sozinho. 
O Bruno Silva não tem aparecido sempre no E agora lugar. atenção, pode um ser é o mesmo. É o golo da equipa do Varzim e é um golo inacreditável. O que é... And in Vietnam, after a goalkeeper gave away a 90th minute penalty, he then saved it before celebrating like this in front of the referee because he thought it shouldn't have been a pen. It's a sh housery award for this random Vietnamese goalkeeper. Now though it's time for still nil-nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this week, with the team in blue, a goal down, we have a 45 seconds that completely summarizes Sunday League football. <laughs> the weird stuff though now for crying out loud again i didn't mean this weird again not literally da equipe do vozão para esse oh wait no don't shoot don't shoot it's the covid i'm measuring your temperature lad it's not a this isn't a... over in wales and buckley town fc had to sack one of their players after he made a i i can't even show the joke but a legitimately vile joke about a woman on tinder imagine getting sacked by your club because you thought you were a big man on a dating app in spain and there was the terrifying video that emerged of musa dembele fainting whilst at atletico madrid training thankfully He's absolutely fine, but he was fully unconscious for a few minutes. He's recovered, he's gone for further medical examinations. He probably just saw the fact he was playing centre-back with nine other players in the next Diego Simeone masterclass. And finally, we have the story of an FM streamer, my mate Doop, who went viral this week after celebrating a goal that kept his team in the division slightly too loudly to the point where he woke up his son. His wife wasn't quite so fully understanding of the situation, but is at least willing to reevaluate when the end of the season comes. But that is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have then feel free to slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.